Thanks for joining us here on CBS 8. I'm Sean Stiles and this is our Cooking with Stiles holiday special. If you don't know what to cook for your friends and family this holiday season or you want to just kind of bring up the level of food that you're putting out on the table this year, we've got some holiday dinners ideas set for you. Let's start with something that everyone loves, potatoes and yams. This classic dish is fantastic and I've got a great way to elevate these dishes. To get this started, peel the potatoes, cube them into one to two inch squares, put them in cold water and turn the heat on high. To that I add a bouquet, which is thyme and bay leaves, heavily salted and add the garlic. The yams are put into cold water, turned on high and heavily salted. Potatoes are done, let's get this little bouquet out because that's not gonna be part of the mashed potatoes. We're gonna leave the garlic in there. I'm gonna strain these off so we get rid of as much of the water as possible. And make sure none of that garlic comes sneaking out of there because that's gonna be part of that mash. All right, I'll put this back on the stove, heat off, lid off to let the moisture evaporate out. Yams are done, but we're gonna make smash, not mash, yams, so we're just going to hit this gently. We're not going to totally mash these down, we're just going to break them up a little bit. And then we're going to move them from this stock pot into a nice little baking dish. And we'll move these in like so, spread them out in that baking dish. And you see how they're still nice and chunky, but there's a little bit of creaminess in there? This will take a little bit of brown sugar and sprinkle that over the top. And then on top of this, now you're saying, okay, here come the marshmallows. No, we're not gonna go with marshmallows. We're gonna go with some mascarpone cheese. This is gonna take a little bit for me to put this on top. So when I'm done, we'll pop this in the oven. In goes the yams. Those will be coming out in just a bit. Everything's ready to go. We took out that little bouquet of bay leaf and thyme, and now we're gonna mash our potatoes. I've got about two tablespoons of butter in there, and I'm gonna mash this up really, really creamy. Don't use one of those whippers, because what happens when you use one of those automatic whipping machines, it takes the starch and stretches it out, and it makes the potatoes gooey like glue. Give me a minute to get everything nice and smooth. Now it's time to put the finishing touches on. I've got my freshly chopped chives, those will go in there and our buttermilk. Now make sure you shake this up before you put it in and start off with just a little because you can always add more but you can't take it out. We don't want these too creamy. From here, we're gonna put our potatoes into our baking dish and make sure you have a hot pad in case it's hot. And we're just gonna go ahead and put those right in our baking dish. And we're gonna want these little peaks and valleys because what that's gonna do is that's gonna give a place for the Parmesan cheese to stick to. So when we put it under the broiler, it's gonna get nice and crusty and brown. It should be really good. In the oven this goes for just a few minutes. So for the last few minutes, what I want you to do is go ahead and throw your broiler on. That's gonna brown up the top there. But the trick here is don't take your eye off of this because you don't want to ruin all the work you've put into this. So the broiler has been on for about four or five minutes. Everything's looking good. There are the mashed potatoes and here are the candied yams. These are super hot, so make sure you have hot pad. We didn't deviate from tradition. We have mashed potatoes, but buttermilk mashed potatoes with a Parmesan glaze and chives and then candied yams but what we did that's a little bit different, check this out, the pecans with maple syrup, you drizzle that over the top and serve that up. We're talking cooking with styles elevated for the holidays, enjoy. You know what those pecans and maple syrup are good on is waffles as well. Hey, another classic for the holiday season are Brussels sprouts. But if you're tired of the typical roasting them with a little balsamic vinegar on top, here's an easy way you can elevate that dish and make them cheesy and creamy. The first step is getting this sauce rolling. And what we're gonna do is put in some butter and you've seen me make this before. We've got our onions right here. We're gonna saute the onions and butter in about a teaspoon of garlic for two or three minutes, and then we're gonna add the flour. So we've got about three or four minutes with the 
onion and garlic, and now I'm adding the flour. We're gonna saute the flour with the butter and onions for another three to four minutes. Now comes the turkey part, adding the half and half to this sauteed onion and flour garlic mixture. And I gotta tell you, you gotta work kinda quick here because it's gonna wanna lump up on you. So use that French whip or whisk, whatever you'd like to call it, and mix those lumps in. And then once it starts to break apart, you can add the rest of the half and half in there. And we'll give this a nice solid whisk to make sure those lumps are gone. And then we're gonna bring this to a low simmer and let it cook for about five, seven minutes. All right, take a look at this sauce right here. I'm gonna shut the heat off. And when you take your finger and put it down the back like that and it doesn't come together, you know your sauce is done. To this, now the heat is off, I'm gonna add my Swiss cheese. You can use Gruyere if you'd like. And we're gonna hold back about a quarter of it because that's gonna go on the topping. I'm gonna fold this over and then I'm gonna set this off to the side to let that cheese and white sauce incorporate. And my water's boiling. In go my Brussels sprouts for about two, three, maybe four minutes till they're tender but not cooked. The Brussels sprouts are done, tender but not fully cooked. We're gonna throw them in this pasta strainer and we're gonna let them drain for just about four or five minutes. We want all the water out possible because we don't want that water getting into the sauce. I'm gonna put some pepper in because I didn't do that when I was doing it in the beginning, so we'll add that in. Let the Brussels sprouts drain a little bit and we'll put it all together. I've lightly buttered the skillet. I'm just gonna put the Brussels sprouts straight in there, leaves and all, and then I'm gonna take this wonderful sauce and fold that in to the Brussels sprouts. We'll just fold this in. It doesn't have to be fancy or perfect. We just wanna get everything kinda layered in together. And then I'm gonna take this Swiss cheese and Parmesan cheese that I've held back and I'm gonna sprinkle that over the top. And this is gonna go in the oven. I'm gonna cook it for about another half hour until those Brussels sprouts are tender and the cheese is melt over the top. Oh, that looks perfect. Okay, let's get this up here and take a little sample. If you're gonna serve it in the skillet, just to let people know that the handle's hot. We're gonna take the little piece here Oh man, look at the steam coming off that. That looks absolutely stunning. I'm gonna take a little piece here. It's gonna be so hot. Mmm, the creaminess of that, that white sauce and the flavor of the onions and the Swiss cheese with the Parmesan on top. This is gonna be a winner when it comes to your holiday festivities. Enjoy. My favorite part of that is the edge where all the cheese melts and it gets really crispy. Coming up, I'll show you how to make an incredible salad that's perfect for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or any holiday this year. Learn how to make a Swiss chard and vinaigrette salad after the break. Everything doesn't have to be a casserole vegetable dish. You can have a nice wilted salad for your dinner table this year. Take a look at this Swiss charred salad with a vinaigrette made with ingredients grown here in San Diego. When Kevin Grangetto heard I wanted to do something with Swiss chard, he said, let me call my buddy Rocky over at Sage Hill Ranch Gardens and see if he's got any coming out of the ground. And sure enough, he did. This was picked fresh this morning. There's a trick to making this though. When you're wilting the leaves, the stems cook much slower. So we're gonna trim those out like that. We're gonna chop these into kind of bite-sized pieces. And then we're gonna take the stem and just dice it up a little bit. Save the stems, because they're gonna get cooked first. So I'm gonna set this stuff aside. And I've already got my bacon in there which I pre-cooked, I pre-cooked this bacon, and I've drained off the fat. So to this, I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of olive oil, and then I'm gonna add a quarter onion here, which I slice nice and thin. And we're gonna saute this just for about three or four minutes, just to soften up the onions. So the onions and bacon have been cooking for about a minute or two. Now I'm gonna add the stems of that Swiss chard in there, 
I'm gonna saute this for another two or three minutes to soften these up. We're coming into the home stretch of the dressing. We're gonna put in our garlic now, and the reason I put it in at the end is I like my garlic to be soft and tender. If you overcook it, it can get a little bit bitter. To this, we're gonna add a tablespoon or more of Dijon mustard, and then that'll give us kind of more of a tang in our dressing. We're also gonna add our craisins or dried cranberries. And then to that, I'm gonna add about a third more cup to a half cup of olive oil, tablespoon of sugar, and then we're gonna add about two or three tablespoons of vinegar. We're gonna let this come to a boil. Oh, and don't forget a little bit of pepper, some black pepper. This is already starting to boil a little bit. Get everything incorporated really well. Have your heat on high. And then to this, I'm gonna add my Swiss chard and I'm gonna to toss it just gently, because all we're trying to do is wilt it here, okay? So a little bit more, and that dressing is nice and hot, so it gets over everything, and that starts to wilt it, and pull the ingredients up from the bottom so they get up over everything. We almost got them all in there. All right, so this is almost done. Oh, if you could smell this, it's just so fragrant. All right, so this will take about another minute of me tossing it gently. So about another total minute on this wilted chard here. And we're gonna plate this up and we'll put this out. This will be kind of like our salad for Thanksgiving or any of the holiday meals, or for that matter, anytime you wanna have a nice little something different instead of just a leafy green salad. And having all these little bits and pieces in here and that extra dressing, Okay, so Sage Hill Ranch Gardens has edible flowers, and watch what happens when we put just a little bit of flower petals on top. I mean, that just kind of sets it off, and actually these petals have a little bit of a flavor to them. So between the beautiful Swiss chard that we picked up this morning and these edible flowers on top from Sage Hill Ranch Gardens, this is absolutely perfect for the holiday season. Some wilted Swiss chard vinaigrette, right here on location at Grand Jettos in Encinitas. Happy holidays, enjoy. So fall is the perfect time of the year to use fresh root vegetables like squash. Up next, I'll show you how to serve a perfect winter squash for your guests this holiday season. So this time of year in the grocery stores, you see all kinds of different squash. With this particular vegetable, I'm gonna be using an acorn squash and we're gonna roast it. And it's the perfect thing to have in the winter or fall. If you need to make it a little bit easy, this dish is delici delicious. And you won't have to stand over the stove waiting hours and hours. You can just pop it in the oven, let it roast. And at the very end, we're gonna put on a beautiful brown butter drizzle. What I like about the winter squashes is they're so rich in flavor and what we're going to do here is basically just get them roasting in the oven. I've got a butternut squash, acorn squash in here and it's super easy as far as the preparation. Olive oil, salt and pepper toss. This is going to take a little bit more salt and pepper because we've got pretty straightforward taste here uh, and there's not a lot of flavor unless we enhance them a little bit. So we'll give these a nice toss so we coat everything. What I like to do is see how I've cut these so they've got this cool little shape to them. I really like that. And then the butternut squash, the beautiful orange in there. Now don't eat the skin even though it'll be really tender. Let's put our squash into a nice big roasting pan, spread everything out. I've got the oven set at 425. Let's head on over there. All right, oven is preheated. Let's get these going. We'll check them in about 20 minutes. While that's going, let's get the brown butter sauce going. It's so simple, I can't even tell you. Butter, vanilla, we're gonna put this in the pan and we're gonna start browning that butter. But if you've never extracted the vanilla bean from the vanilla bean, I'm gonna show you how to do it here. You just split this fresh vanilla bean like that, open it up and take the back side of the knife and just push through like that. And that is all the vanilla bean. I'm gonna put that in there. 
I'm gonna whisk this around and in the next couple minutes, that's gonna start to turn brown. Keep an eye on it because you don't wanna burn it. Come on in here and take a look at this now so you can see what I'm talking about. This is after about three or four minutes. You see that brown? That's what we're looking for. We're at that brown butter stage and I've thrown the whole bean in there to extract all of the little tiny beans out of it. We'll take those out before we serve it, but this is done. While the squash is finishing up roasting in the oven, what I like to do is get my sage pre-cooked or crispy. You can use canola oil. You can also use a little bit of olive oil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep this moving in here, and what I'm gonna cook it till is until the sage is nice and crispy, and then I'll transfer it onto a little paper towel here. And this will go on just after we put that brown butter vanilla dressing on top. All right, these look nice and done. Caramelization around the edges. Now the squash takes a little bit longer than most vegetables when you roast them, so be sure you test them with a little knife or something on the edges. And we're just gonna go ahead and plate this up, slide this right in like so. I mean, I, I think that looks gorgeous. But we're gonna take it to the next level. There's that vanilla and brown butter. We're just gonna drizzle that over the top. That vanilla bean is just so good. You wanna get it all over everything. Then we're gonna take that sage that we fried to make crispy and put it over the top. And that little bit of extra seasoning from the sage that we've cooked up here next to the creaminess of the winter squash. This is really a, a dish that a lot of people who don't like squash will try this and come back for seconds. An elevated winter holiday special. Happy holidays. Now I know you might be tempted to use a little bit of the vanilla that's in the jar and especially don't use the imitation. Splurge and get the vanilla bean. It's a great way to go. All right, so no matter how stuffed you feel at the end of the holiday dinners, there's always leftovers. Up next, I'll show you how to make an easy, delicious way to reuse those leftovers in a dish that looks a lot harder than it actually is. But first, here's some rules on how to keep those leftovers safely stacked in the fridge. So when it comes to the holiday dinners, most people don't eat everything that's out on the presentation table. Uh, and so potentially we send tons of food to the landfills every year. So here's a fun way to use up all those leftovers in a pie. Take a look at this. To get this started, we're gonna start filling our pie crust with our different ingredients here. I've got a little bit of turkey left over from yesterday, some sweet yams, some roasted cauliflower, uh, some pearled onions that I love to roast, a few pieces of Brussels sprout, and some carrots. Now, you might have your own vegetables left over. I'm using a pie crust here. I also did this with a puff pastry crust. You're gonna wanna make an egg wash. That's a little bit of egg, about one egg, and about two or three tablespoons of water mixed into that. So you see how I put it around the edge? I'm gonna make sure that all the ingredients are in the center. I'm gonna fold this over, and then I'm gonna press with my fingers at first. We're gonna come back and make it a little bit more decorative with this fork here. I'll take the fork and press down on the edge. Now, because there's not any liquid in there, I'm not too worried about any weeping out but I want to make sure that all the moisture stays in there and then to add a little something to this to make the pie crust have that nice little golden brown to it I'm going to take that egg wash and put it over the top of my pie crust and puff pastry crust which I have to tell you that's a little bit difficult to work with but the payoff is big time in the end and then just to dress this up a little bit a sprinkle of salt over each one that'll add a little bit of savoriness to it and then we'll put a little twist of cracked pepper on top for contrast in color and of course flavor. All right, let's go throw these in the oven. However, make sure you put a couple holes in the top of that pastry crust to let the steam out. We don't want it to uh, blow up on you. In the oven they go like a normal pie. We're gonna bake these at 425 degrees. Now remember, we're just trying to brown up the pie crust here, so we're not doing like 45 minutes. This is just about 15 minutes, and look how golden brown those are. I'm gonna show you two ways to plate this up. One is, 
the simplest and easy one is you just kind of set it out and let everyone grab a pie and eat it however they'd like it. I've got the puff pastry one right there. I've got the pie crust one here. But here's another way I like to do this. You've probably got a lot of gravy left over and you've probably got a lot of cranberry sauce left over. So let's take this last one. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna split it in half like that. Look at that steam coming out. And I'm gonna just put them on the plate like so. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of my gravy and I'm gonna drizzle it over the front here because I have tons of gravy left over. And then I always like to make a lot of extra cranberry sauce to have for dipping or sandwiches or things just like this. Okay, so if you're from England or New Zealand, you know what a pie is, like our taco stamps. But boy, I'll tell you what, this is a great way to take those Thanksgiving leftovers and make them something special. Happy holidays. So the great thing about the holiday season is it brings our families and friends together. I hope these recipes make it a more delicious holiday season for you. Remember, these are guidelines to elevate your meals. Casual elegance from cooking with style. So definitely a great way to go. And I hope you have a wonderful, safe, and peaceful holiday season. We'll see you in the kitchen.